So Eric and I are always curious and determined to find the latest, greatest things for you. Because why? Because we're givers. Yeah, we, we care, have to be. We love. You know? yeah. And uh, just this past week um, was the biggest trade show uh, in, on the planet when it t- comes to kitchen and bath trends. Uh, it's called KBiz, the Kitchen Bath and Builder Show. And so Eric and I are always checking these things out. And one of the big things that we're hearing, and we're going to talk about some great trends that you want to think of for your decor in your home, is that the brands, the big the big companies that make appliances and, you know, live and carpeting and whatever it is, they're very aware that, you know, now everything is like your smart whatever. Right. Your There's light. apps that apps do all this, the which main is, brain of the house. Right, which is great. Yeah. But the, after a while, what they found with their research is that people feel, we as homeowners and just consumers feel kind of cold. It kind of feels like it's there's too much technology. So now the next big thing is that they're going to be customizing things so you feel like we care just about you, Eric Stromer. It's not uh, about the masses. It's not about all the technology and the cold, impersonal. We really care about you. And okay. so what that means is whether it, let's say it's a refrigerator, you could have a refrigerator that looks just how you want the rest of your decor to look from the finish, but then the inside, it would work as your lifestyle. You have So three customizable kids. inserts. Is that what you're saying? Kind of like, yeah. if you're a guy that's buying meat all the time, more meat storage and taller things for turkeys and chickens to fit. And yep. then if you're a wine, so that's totally. I got you. Or if you've got kids, you have more room for your milk there because you we know you can't oh, keep enough yeah, milk. In. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should have a cow <laughs> by now. <laughs> oh, I still want an alpaca, but I hear yeah, that I they're not very they're not friendly. Not but spit. anyway, so let's talk about some of the trends. I mean, I, we're also hearing that white. The all white, white is back again. When did, it never goes away. Now you've been working with some folks on kitchens and things. Are they wanting white? Yes, this person just had the entire interior of their home painted white, stark, stark really? white. No, no difference in trim, door color, wall color. It's all white. I wonder where that comes from. I, it's just that super mod, you know, fresh, feeling, clean. fresh. And there's no, uh, you know, and then the cool thing about it is that anything you put on the walls just pops. Sure. For example, say you have an all white kitchen and mm-hmm. then you decide you want to add a touch of color. Imagine then if you've got some stools that have bright red upholstery on them, you know, it really does show up and it doesn't become overwhelming with color. It's a very neutral palette. It looks clean and fresh and sanitary, you know, and some, some people love that look, you know. So I can see if we're, we're taking it. It's not just a bland boring white room it probably has different textures of white yeah you're going to have your your textures of tile and mm-hmm. cabinetry depending on the door style uh you know you might still have some stainless components you know your refrigerator and your your cooktop and all that stuff but primarily everything's white paint is white cabinetry is white uh tiles white but different textures and getting back to uh how you watch for things to be customized to you. If you were to have an all-white kitchen, very soon uh, you could now also have appliances that, let's say you didn't want it to be stainless steel and you didn't want it to be white because sometimes white appliances don't look as Hey, you had marinara fancy. last night. <laughs> How do you know? Well, there's splatters all over. I can see. It looks... But they, they, they've come up with ways to turn the surface now into maybe another color so that it mimics whatever you have. And does it ch- it does it change by are you programming it to change? It's not quite that level. It would just be a one-stop shot. It would be like a, a one mood time. ring refrigerator. It wouldn't be like that. Okay. It would be like, let's say that you had to go with your white kitchen, you had red uh, bar stools, you could now have a red... Well, now you can get a lot of red appliances anyway. It's kind of a bad example. But let's say you wanted leopard. Or, you know, you could have whatever oh, okay. that look is on your finish to go with your decor. So that's where we're going. And then next year in 2016, guess what? Leopards out. (laughs) (laughs) Oops. Oh, well. Oh, well. What are you going to do? You know, we're also, we saw a lot of this at the the Kitchen and Bath trade show is brass. I mean, we've been hearing a lot about brass is back in terms of tchotchkes and little decor things throughout the house. It is big time back in terms of um, bathroom finishes. I cannot tell you how many times I ripped out brass shower doors in my life. You should have saved them. <laughs> Just like neckties, you know? Don't ever throw out a necktie. You never know when it's going to go wide Isn't or narrow. Isn't that weird? And no, but that's... seriously, that, you know, it almost makes me mad. That, this is the this is the idea well, on fashion, right? They want us to buy stuff, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, but come on. I mean, bra- ah. You don't like brass. I, no, it's not that I don't like it. I was but just you, conditioned you took it to out. tear it out. Well, so... People would say to me, 
So you tacky. Know, I'd be like, it's What's so the matter with 80s? your bathroom? It looks right. Oh, brass. Are you kidding? I know. Well, now it's the hip thing. I know because brass kind of felt ostentatious. It became dated. Gauche, gauche, almost like you're in. You know, like the Madonna Inn, you right, know what I mean? Right. Almost like a very overdone thing. But now brass, you know, really is back. So, I don't think I can do it. And they're saying that it's back not only in the bathroom, but also in the kitchen and in the living room. So, you know, maybe you could try with baby steps. But, you know, you know look around. When you're when you're at the big box stores or when you're in different showrooms, you're going to start to see it. You'll see it on TV shows. You go, oh, my gosh, Eric and Cindy are right. Brass There's is brass there. everywhere. There it is. So, anyway. Oh, boy. Natural rattan. Now, this is something that we've seen a lot. You mean uh, like wall covering stuff? Wall covering. Uh, okay. Now, this has really never gone out of style. No, I've seen it. And I like it. You know, but the idea is we're, we're seeing more neutral. It's, it's that subtle pattern where it, it, as a wallpaper, as a wall treatment, mm. it feels, you know, almost like a straw hat. Yeah. You know, or right. a throw rug. It has that texture and, and it feels ethnic. And yeah. And... Yeah. And, and if you've got pets at some point very shortly thereafter, the cat will start scratching on that wall that you uh -oh. spent thousands of dollars putting on. So make sure that, that, that make sure that's under control. That the nails are clipped. Well, either that or don't get the rattan. Oh, okay, because you can just say, well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's an ideal scratch <laughs> post for a cat. That's a good tip because I didn't yeah. even think about yeah. that. Yeah. All right, another thing that we're seeing is a trend for 2015 is to use pattern throughout the space in layers. Now, we see this a lot in clothing, in, in men's clothing and women's. Like, think think of a guy wearing a printed, vibrant uh, shirt, yeah. but then wearing another printed, vibrant tie, and then and, some vibrant socks. And last year, you would have said that that guy is a clown in the circus. <laughs> but it's fashionable. And now it's fashionable. <laughs> isn't it funny? Pattern on pattern. Isn't that amazing? And so the idea, though, the trick to all of this, and you see it a lot in women's clothing as well as men's, yeah. is that you there's a continuity, there's a theme. So let's say if you had a rainbow shirt, for instance, yeah. and there was there was black in one of the stripes. There was black as well as purples and yellows and all the colors of the rainbow. But then you would just focus on that black and now bring in black as another color you know, focal point. So let's say you take that from your clothing look to a room. And yep. let's say for a bedspread, you had the rainbow, stripe rainbow as the bedspread, mm -hmm. but now black is one of the colors in the rainbow on the spread, and now it's black and white wallpaper. Okay. I, it looks it looks great. It's a lot. It's amazing because you never, you I couldn't imagine it, you know, yeah. until I see someone else do it who does this all the time. And you go, oh, that's kind of interesting. Yeah. So the key would be to have smaller patterns with bigger patterns. So if you had, I mean, and you and your family being artists, I mean, you could probably speak to how the idea is if you have a big pattern that's the really bold color. Now, if you're going to have another pattern, maybe it's just a smaller geometric design. It's not mm -hmm. like big and big because yeah. that's going to give you a headache. Right. No, it's cool the way they they've they've. I'll, I'm looking at a specific photo that we're, that you're referring to. It's 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 kind of cool. Patterns on patterns, it works. Yeah. But you got to know what you're doing. You got to know what you're doing and, and just be thinking, okay, pick the one main fabric that you're going to have as your busiest one. Yeah. So let's say if that's your sofa or that's your bedspread or it's a throw rug. Right. Then pick two others that are either not as frenetic. Or a completely different color palette. Different, yeah. But yeah. there's something that kind of connects the two. It uh -huh. has one color that still... Through line. M yeah, mimics them somehow. That's your black. Yeah. Another thing that we're seeing is kind of bringing rustic to modern. So like... I, I, you know, I, I've started seeing this in retail spaces. Yeah. You know, like especially anthropology, which is a great example. They always have the... You know, modern counter and then the old reclaimed wood. Yes. You know, backdrop of some it sort. It feels sustainable. You know? it, it speaks to yeah. our, our values. It's actually, I like it. I think it's really, it's peaceful. So be thinking, you know, it's almost. A good, you know what it is? It's a really good way to soften modern yeah. design. So it's spa meets contemporary. There you go. Right? So yeah. the next time you go to a spa and you look around you, they've got the bamboo and they've got the. Right. But then know, they'll have high tech, sleek surfaces like, you know, Caesar Stone mixed yes. with some 
some sort of a, you know, old reclaimed backdrop. Very cool. And another thing to do is calming hues like soft gray. Still going to be very, very popular, whether it's gray, you know, wall coloring or gray carpeting or even a gray sofa. Using that as something that grounds you with that splash I of like a that. bright, That's great bold too. color. Yep. Yeah. All good ideas, big trends for 2015, as well as the open plan kitchen. You know, all that. Watch for it and take a, take a stab at it. Anyway, we have more things to talk about. Eric Stormer, Cindy Dole, you're listening to Home Wizards.